World peace is officially gone. World powers are constantly at loggerheads. Lines between allies and foes are increasingly clearer. And of course, wars keep breaking out. One in Ukraine, and now another in Israel. The US is heavily involved in both and must be getting tired of it. But enough is enough. The US is unleashing its greatest weapons to bring victories to its allies and unquestionable defeat to foes. The US is unleashing its $13 billion aircraft carrier into the seas. It is the largest, heaviest, and most expensive aircraft carrier ever built. Sound the bells, ring the alarms, warn the foes. Let them know that they better start running because the USS Gerald Ford is coming. It's all another chapter in war that has lasted decades, but it's no ordinary chapter. It's one that will define the rest of the story for centuries to come. You see, Hamas and Israel have been at loggerheads since before YouTube was created. Launching explosives and issuing out threats was almost normal. But this time, it was worse. It was far worse. It was like nothing Israel could have predicted, even despite their warring history. Hamas went from a rival that Israel went fist to fist with, to an enemy that would plan and execute terrorist attacks against the country. These attacks began on October 7th, about a week ago. It started as a normal morning in Israel, but in not long, would become one of the darkest days in the country's history. Families having a great time would soon have reasons to mourn. Over 1,200 Israelis would soon lose their lives. Thousands would soon be wounded. Palestinian militant groups led by Hamas launched a deadly large-scale campaign against Israel with a militant invasion of the country from the Gaza Strip, followed by at least 3,000 missiles fired at Israel. Not even partygoers at a music festival were spared. At least 260 civilians were killed at that festival alone. It was a massacre. Whether with military ties or not, Israeli men, women, and children were all in danger of death or kidnapping to be used as bargaining chips or just the spoils of war. Israel was furious, and the Israeli government responded decisively, promising a level of retaliation that the invaders would not forget for generations to come. And they kept true to that promise. After clearing Hamas forces from affected areas inside Israel, the country bombarded Gaza with airstrikes. Israel leveled major parts of the country. Major military hotspots where the invasion plans could have taken place were reduced to rubble, and a lot more followed suit. But it was only just the beginning. Israel is a close ally to the US and all of the West. In fact, it is one of the few nations officially regarded as a major non-NATO ally. An attack on Israel is an indirect attack on the United States along with the fact that America's 9-11 history motivates the U.S. to crack down on terrorist attacks with iron fists. In addition to these, at least nine Americans were killed during the Hamas attacks, and more Americans reportedly kidnapped. In more ways than one, the U.S. was now very much involved in this conflict. With Iran also involved in the conflict, but on Hamas's side, American President Joe Biden and U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced that help was on the way to Israel. This included an entire armada of ships, including the USS Gerald Ford. Why? Well, Israel is mighty dominant on the ground and in the skies, but on the seas, not so much. The country doesn't even have an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carriers are the largest, most expensive, and most powerful military vehicles on the planet. In one voyage, they can carry an entire community of personnel, an entire fleet of aircraft, and enough firepower to destroy entire cities. Today, a quarter of all aircraft carriers in the world belong to the US. Their total combined deck space is more than double that of all other nations combined, and the entire fleet is being led by a $13 billion monster so huge it is referred to as a supercarrier, the one on its way to Israel. Before it completes its journey, here's what makes it so monstrous and why it's the ultimate aid the US could provide to Israel during this conflict. Number 4. Nuclear Power 
two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors. The most cutting-edge engines created for use on water power the USS Gerald Ford. As a result, the carrier would only need to be refueled once over its entire 50-year operational life, as these engines make use of the everlasting nature of nuclear energy. This means USS Ford can run for 25 years at a time without refueling. And with a peak speed of around 30 knots, the supercarrier can access every country on the planet just in time to pay friendly visits to allies and wreak havoc on enemies. Number 3. New Sensors and Processing Systems USS Ford features the latest sensors, processors, and weapons needed on an aircraft carrier to maintain that balance of intelligence and lethality. Unlike virtually every other aircraft carrier in the world, the USS Ford features a single system for both horizon and volume search in the form of the ANSPY-3 multifunction radar for X and S-band active electronically scanned array. It remains the most advanced radar system from the US, with enough versatility to handle surveillance, air traffic control, missile communications, and spot targets from miles away. Number 2. American Fighter Jets and UAVs Up to 75 fighter jets and unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, can call the USS Ford home at a time, including the Navy's favorite child, the fifth-generation F-35C Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter, whose development program remains the most expensive weapons development program of the Pentagon to date, with a reported cost of $400 billion. The result of such an expensive program is a fighter that really can do it all. Close air support, vertical takeoff and landing, and everything in between, cementing it as the modern go-to fighter for the Navy and every other department of the military. That is, until the sixth-generation FAXX fighter takes center stage, of course. And for when that happens, the USS Ford is already equipped with the technologies required to host, launch, and arrest it. Number 1. Advanced Launch and Arrest Systems An electromagnetic launch system to catapult every kind of manned and unmanned aircraft to the sky in the shortest possible distance, and an arresting gear that saves them from becoming sea divers by grinding them to a sharp halt. The edge of these systems that offer 4,100 takeoffs and 16,500 arrests before faults over short takeoff ramps and even older steam-powered launch systems are increased sorties, meaning more aircraft could take off from this carrier and land on it in the shortest possible time than any aircraft carrier without these systems. Interestingly, China, which has the second highest number of aircraft carriers behind the US, also has similar launch and arrest systems on its latest carrier, the Type 003 Fujian, which is only 80% the size of the USS Ford. With these capabilities in the bag, how would the US not dominate the seas? Israel is really getting the best they could. However, it's worth noting that while Israel doesn't have an aircraft carrier, they do have a unique submarine that deserves its own subsection. Enter the INS Dracon, a soon-to-be-commissioned $2 billion cylinder of technologies, strategies, and weapons that ensures a great level of dominance on the seas for Israel despite a lack of aircraft carriers. INS Dracon is roughly a 33-foot-long attack submarine with a displacement of 2,400 tons fully submerged the heaviest of the Israeli Navy. The submarine runs on a diesel-electric propulsion system that produces up to 4,243 shaft horsepower, combined with an AIP system. This enables the submarine to reach a maximum speed of 25 knots and a range of 2,800 miles, meaning it can travel great distances at impressive speeds to execute its missions. With up to a week of uninterrupted underwater explorations, the AIP system allows the submarine to stay quietly underwater for much longer than it normally would. This is a massive plus, because submarines are much stealthier when underwater, and submarines rely on their stealth to survive. The submarine has six 533mm torpedo tubes, four 650mm torpedo tubes, and a vertical launch tube. 
These enable the submarine to launch entire arsenals of torpedoes and missiles. Missiles on board could include the UGM-84C Harpoon anti-ship missiles, the Triton anti-helicopter missiles, and the Celebrity Popeye Turbo, a turbofan-powered submarine-launched cruise missile with a range of at least 932 miles. It is widely believed that the Popeye Turbo missiles can be armed with a 200 kiloton nuclear warhead, providing Israel with a second strike capability as part of its undisclosed nuclear arsenal. One heavyweight torpedo that'll feature in this lineup is the Seahake Mod 4, an export version of the DM-2A4 Zehecht wire-guided torpedoes originally developed by Atlas Electronic for German Navy submarines. Once commissioned, this submarine will be Israel's go-to to respond to imminent national sea-based threats. But for now, in light of the Hamas conflict, that task is going to America's USS Gerald Ford and her armada of escorts. The age-long Israel-Hamas war has taken a very dark turn, escalating into something from a nightmare. Israel has responded accordingly, securing its land and skies, and then having the most powerful aircraft carrier in the world, the USS Gerald Ford, securing the seas. With all three domains covered, Israel now only needs you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do that now, and thanks for watching.